boy what a game an absolutely enthralling game end-to-end -end stuff ends in a 1-1 draw man city and liverpool both share the points one point each it is a huge result as an arsenal fan i'm very happy with it being 1-1 but it is a huge result 10 games to play now city sit third liverpool sit second arsenal sit first but they're all one point in each other liverpool and arsenal are now equal on points but Going back to the game, Liverpool City, it was a good watch, a very fun watch. A lot of these games tend to be cagey at times because neither team really wants to make a mistake and lose ground, kind of like a final is, but this game, from the moment it started, was open. Man City had their chances, Liverpool had their chances, it was such a good game. And in the beginning, I was thinking Man City are looking the better team. Now don't get me wrong, Liverpool did have their chances, that long ball into Darwin Nunes, they tried countless amount of times. But for the most part, especially in the first half, City were dominant. The first half of the first half was really, really good. And City dominated that part. City had more chances, more shots. They were working Kelleher. Van Dijk had to work a lot to make sure City didn't score. But eventually, despite Liverpool having some really good chances, Man City having some really good chances, eventually a goal, a breakthrough from Man City, but it was such a genius and strange way to score. They must have seen it in tactical analysis in the preparation for this game, but how Liverpool can concede that type of goal off an error like that in such an important game, it, I don't get it. How they can be caught cold against Man City. That goal kind of reminded me of the Origi goal, you know, Trent Alexander takes it quickly and all that stuff, but this goal, I don't know how Liverpool can allow it. Now, to be fair, it must have been planned. Ake did really well to move McAllister out the way without fouling him. And John Stone slots it into the empty net. I mean, I don't know how Liverpool allowed that. It was literally a pass to the near post on the ground. And John Stones just puts it in. Now, Keller, to his credit, did try to close it down, but it was too little too late. Liverpool made a bad error. But after that goal, you're thinking, oh, City's 1-0 up. They're playing the better football. They're looking much the better team. They're going to go on. They're going to push for two or three. And this could be a whitewash. Absolutely not. Liverpool are much better than a lot of people think they are. And on paper, having no Salah starting, but they are still so, so good. No Alexander Arnold, no Allison, but they are still so, so good. They still made Man City work for it. And what is so commendable about this Liverpool performance is that a lot of teams would have folded. They're 1-0 down. Man City is looking inevitable. They're controlling the game. Liverpool are on the ropes a little bit. A lot of teams fold there, but not Liverpool. Liverpool kept fighting. And after that goal, Liverpool were probably the better team. Liverpool controlled the game after that. And going into halftime, although it was 1-0 to Man City, you were quietly confident that Liverpool would eventually find a breakthrough. But it was certain that the next goal was so crucial for Liverpool to be scoring. You can't be 2-0 down at home to City. You just can't afford that. So going into the second half, you're thinking from a City perspective, all they have to do is just not mess up. You played really well in the beginning of the first half. You kind of tape it off towards the end, but it's all right. You can pick yourselves back up but just don't mess up. And what do they do to start the second half? Exactly that, they go out and mess up. Nathan Ake with an absolutely atrocious back pass, forces Edison to foul Nunes to concede a penalty and McAllister starts away beautifully to make the game 1-1. And as an Arsenal fan, I was extremely happy for it to be 1-1 obviously because now we can sit top of the table, but on the balance of play, I think a 1-1 is fair. I think you could argue that Liverpool probably deserved at least a 2-1 victory but to be fair on the balance of play if we're being unbiased it's probably a 1-1 is a fair result Liverpool had their chances and missed them Man City had their chances and missed them Luis Diaz looked really good very energetic very hard working but he should have taken some chances that he didn't end up taking he didn't put on targets I think overall it should have been a win maybe for Liverpool, but I would say on the balance of play, a draw isn't the worst result. And again, a draw isn't the worst result for Liverpool or Man City. This was a game for Liverpool and Man City to just not lose. Just don't go lose the game. Keep yourself in the title race, at least pick up a point and keep yourself going. That was how I think Liverpool and City kind of approached it. Again, at the end of the day, you're looking at it. I think City were playing for the 1-1 draw. I think the moment you take off the Bruyne when it's 1-1, kind of tells you what you want to do. Yes, you brought on Doku, but it kind of told me what you want to do. Taking off the Bruyne, when they did with it 1-1, kind of made me think that they're going to kind of play maybe a counter-attack in football against Liverpool, being that Doku's on and he has so much pace. But that didn't work either. 
The moment Liverpool made a 1-1, Liverpool controlled the game. Without a shadow of a doubt in my mind, all the time went on, you were convinced and convinced Liverpool were going to score. I mean, that game was so chaotic though. Even when Liverpool were completely dominating, City would go up the other end and get a really good chance. Kelleher would make a good save or Van Dijk would make a good block or whatever the case is. But it was such an entertaining game. Now, let's just get to the main talking point that everyone and their mom is talking about right now. Was it a penalty? Did Doku foul McAllister? If I'm being honest, unbiased, no, that was not a penalty. And I'll explain why. Yes, there was contact. Very minimal contact, but contact. But the thing is, in slow motion, you give it a penalty. In slow motion, it looks like a penalty. But you look at it, Doku won the ball, and Doku ever so slightly, with the follow through, touched McAllister. Yes, his boot was high. I'm not saying it wasn't high, but I'm saying it wasn't nearly enough to just flip the Premier League on its head to give a penalty. Not in the dying minutes of the game, and in slow motion, it looks like a penalty, but in real time, it just doesn't. And even in slow motion, it doesn't really look like a penalty because Doku won the ball, and it's a very slow, very gradual follow through that snicks McAllister. I don't see how you can give it as a penalty. Unless you're a Liverpool fan, in that case, I understand why you see it as a penalty, but Biases aside, it's not a penalty. I don't understand what the discourse is about it. It's not a penalty. I mean, the game itself was such a good watch. I mean, through City hitting the woodwork, Haaland, Leicester or Haaland, my man got pocketed by Van Dijk. And now I'm a firm believer that Haaland is probably one of the best finishers, if not the best finisher in world football. But that performance from Haaland in a huge game like that, that was unacceptable. You are the face of Man City. You are the face of their attack. And because you don't get elite balls in from De Bruyne, you do nothing. It is, it, it mind boggles me. He is one of the best finishers in world football, but outside of that, Haaland doesn't bring anything to the City team. He just doesn't. He's not good at hold up play. He's very strong, but he can't do hold up play. That doesn't make sense to me. He doesn't set up other teammates. He doesn't pass. Haaland had one touch in Liverpool's box the whole game. You're number nine, you're a striker. Arguably one of the best strikers in the world. Someone who probably should have had the bottom door last year, though, that's another topic. My man had one touch in Liverpool's box their entire game. It's unacceptable. All the hype and praise that Haaland gets, and a lot of that is rightfully so, he needs to do more. You can't just be a finisher. You can't just be a poacher in the box. Even though you are the best at it, you can't just do that. Now, I'm not saying Haaland is bad. Haaland is still, to me, one of the best players in the world. But that performance against Liverpool, getting pocketed by one of the best centre-backs in the world, it's unacceptable. And this is not the first time this season that it's happened. Against Arsenal in the Emirates Stadium, Haaland was pocketed. Saliba pocketed him. This time around, Van Dijk pocketed him. It's really, really not looking good. Haaland needs to perform better in bigger games. I'm not talking just about scoring. He needs to do more other than just scoring. That's a fact. But listen, whether you're a City fan, whether you're a Liverpool fan, at the end of the day, the big winners of this game are my team, Arsenal. It doesn't really do much because Arsenal still have to travel to the Etihad, which is a whole nother story. And as of right now, I still don't know who I think is going to win the league. I don't think it's Arsenal. I don't know about Liverpool and City's obviously the favourites as they always are. But the thing about Liverpool that's so impressive to me, and I said this earlier, they have been injury riddled the whole season, right? As of this game, going into this game against City, there was no Alexander Arnold, no Alisson, no Thiago, no Salah. Salah was on the bench. But they still found a way to get a 1 1 draw against the defending European champions, the defending Premier League champions, treble winners, Man City. It is crazy how well. Liverpool have actually scouted how good their youth system is. I already made a video about that. Check that out if you haven't already. Liverpool have been so impressive, despite the injuries, to still be able to put in really good performances against really good teams. At the end of the day, whether you like it or not, Liverpool, to me, should have won that game. They were the more impressive team, and all things considered, are looking like champions. The moment that Liverpool get back to full fitness, i.e. Alexander-Arnold is back, Alisson is back, this team is looking scary for the Premier League. Very, very scary. But yeah, guys, that's the video. Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on the game? Was it a penalty? Was it not? Who do you think will win the Premier League? Let me know in the comments below. Please be sure to smash the like button. Subscribe if you guys haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one.